Anna Pieri, and I'm a professor of Italian and the visual arts at Royal Oak University of London. And I've also been uh, involved in a large research project called Interdisciplinary Italy for the past few years. And what I want to do today is give you an overview of the project and some of the things that I've been involved in. The uh, website of uh, our project. So inter-art, intermedia, what does it mean? What are we doing? Why is it important? Um, we're very interested in what influence the development of uh, inter-art and intermedia practice in uh, modern Italy, and particularly in many ways in what lies in between arts and disciplines and frameworks, media or methodological approaches. So with this project and with our website, we wanted to create a space to discuss, curate and teach inter-artistic and intermedia work but also a space of real dialogue and co-creation of knowledge between academics, artists, museum curators and teachers to explore and experiment what we call inter-artistic and intermediate practices. I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to be very brief and I'll give you a flavour of three areas that are of real concern to us and to me in particular. One, of course, is research. Um, then I want to talk to you a little bit about how we went about making space for new modes of academic um, writing and also practice uh, in, uh, in our research. And then I also want to talk a little bit about pedagogy. Um, research, this is a huge area. All I can say is just give you one very brief example from my own work. And, and it is a female Italian artist, Katia La Rocca, born in 1938 and she died in 1976. And she is a very important exponent of the visual, uh, uh, what, visual poetry movement, Poesia Visiva. Uh, this is a very interesting movement of the Italian uh, neo avant garde, you know, sort of that starts around the middle of the 1960s and then goes on until the 1970s. Um, her work is particularly interesting because in many ways it fell in between the cracks of two disciplines. On the one hand we have poetry, uh, understood even at this time of great experimentation much more as a written word, and on the other hand we have the visual side, which is normally still certainly tended at the time to, to be seen as the field of study of art historians. Uh, and as Armando Migliorini noted already in the 1970s, um, Poesia Visiva was a difficult object to define and categorize. You know, he calls it oggetto poetico visivo, this poetic and visual object. And note the, the emphasis on object. Uh, and, and in 1978, you know, he was really sort of saying, you know, this is a problem because, you know, none of the traditional disciplines that would deal with either poetry or art are actually dealing with this new phenomenon. Um, and this is precisely what inter-art and intermedia is for us, is kind of putting in the emphasis, taking away from the periphery um, artists, approaches and uh, objects of study that normally uh, are not centre stage. Um, something that we've been also really interested in exploring more is the idea that there are different ways of uh, different modes of academic writing. You know, we write articles for journals, we write uh, monographs, uh, and, and all that is very well. And this is one of the big things that we've been doing. But at the same time, you know, blogging um, and, uh, and, and writing in other ways is also equally important. And so is practice. And I just want to give you one very brief example, um, and it's that of our project exhibition. Um, in the um, winter of 2019, um, we uh, did an exhibition at the Estre Collection of Modern Italian Art, one of our official partners of the project. Uh, it was an exhibition called The Making of Modern Italy, Art and Design in the Early 1960s. And it really aimed to capture that sort of sense of interconnection between art, fashion, design, the visual arts and architecture um, that was very experimental, that linked the world of uh, industry and technology to uh, the arts and humanities. And it was actually very much the way Italy was perceived and being portrayed at the time, especially outside of the country, uh, North America and, and the UK um, in, in particular. So Italy was seen at the time in the early 1960s as this place that knew how to do interdisciplinary uh, uh, research and practice where uh, the, the links and the boundaries between arts and, uh, and media 
and um, and and also the world of uh, of the arts and technology and industry uh, was much more fluid. It's something that has been really important to us is also work on our pedagogy and how we can take ideas about uh, this, the the breaking down of boundaries between uh, arts and disciplines you know outside of the confines of uh, of academia and uh, and really have a vibrant dialogue with with other uh, with other people uh, including and very importantly also with schools and students um, so yet again uh, I'm only giving you one very brief example and an estate exchange so we've been working for the past four years with Tate Modern. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with Tate Exchange, it's, uh, it's a physical space, but also a kind of intellectual space. Um, as, as Tate says, you know, a space for all to play, create, reflect and question what art can mean to our everyday. And what we've done here is um, put together uh, um, work with the with the general public but also with groups of students in schools particularly coming from history departments um, modern languages uh, students of design and art historians and here is an example of some of the things that uh, that we've done you know bringing people together uh, exchanging ideas you know curating uh, co-curating an exhibition and also creating some new work uh, in particular in in the uh, interdisciplinary futurism project, we looked at uh, um, uh, we created some new examples of uh, futurist poetry, and as you can see from uh, from these images, and uh, and it was a, it was a different way of experiment and and try and understand you know one of the most important movements really in uh, in the early twentieth century to try to break boundaries between uh, the arts and uh, and media and disciplines. And I've got a few more pictures for you to uh, to look at the sort of work that we did. Uh, this was also very much going towards the idea of co-creation of knowledge, um, and and what happens in the classroom when people from different disciplinary backgrounds all come together, think about the same issues, but come at it from different angles, but also importantly, perhaps ask different questions of these same issues. We uh, created a, a pop-up exhibition, and uh, people presented their ideas and work, and we created some new uh, new work as well. And you can see here um, some really powerful collage uh, work that some of our um, students and members of the general public created at Tate. Here are some of the the words that people describe in their feedback to us, uh, what they experienced during. Um, some of these activities, both at Tate Exchange, but also other things that we've done um, with schools. And, uh, and we've had a very, very busy um, couple of years. Um, so ideas about interdisciplinarity, about collaboration, about co-production of knowledge, you know, bringing communities together, a less hierarchical way to explore culture, more creative, you know, uh, uh, hybrid spaces that encouraged active participation, project and group, group work, ideas about curiosity and play. Um, these are all really important and powerful um, messages for us. So um, a final thought, uh, and this came to me as I was thinking about interior design. It might be slightly off center and a little bit quirky, but uh, let's see what you make of it. One of my favorite uh, Italian designers of the 20th century, um, Ettore Sozzas, um, was reflecting upon uh, the role of design and what designers do. Uh, and he offers this thought, um, talking about Charles Eames, one of the most important designers um, in uh, American designers of the second half of the 20th century. He says, when Charles Eames designs his chair, he does not design just a chair, he designs a way of sitting down. So uh, my idea to you is perhaps arts and media and disciplines are a little bit like a chair. They design a certain way for us to, to think, to reflect, to approach our material. And perhaps what we need to do is experiment and sit on different chairs. You know, perhaps there is one on which we sit very comfortably. Uh, but at the same time, unless we experience another way of, of thinking, another way of sitting down, if you want, you know, we may not really stretch ourselves out of our comfort zone. And there are very important issues here about um, how we conceive the discipline that we study. 
So uh, the idea of interdisciplinary Italy as a means to explore what is at the center, at the core of, of arts and disciplines and, uh, and, and, and media, but also what is at the periphery uh, and, and whether there is a way to actually really sort of bring things that are at the center or at the periphery much closer to each other and explore the space that lies in between is very much what has been guiding us over the past few years. Thank you very much for listening and, um, and do um, contact us if you're interested and certainly visit the website of, uh, of our project. It's an interactive website and we'd like to hear from you.